Welcome to Emotional Freedom TV. This is episode number four and I'm Mary Henderson. Well, today's episode is uh, on the topic of energy psychology. And in specific, uh, I want to talk about uh, EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, uh, because I've had a lot of questions. Um, raised throughout the last week about EFT, my view on EFT, um, and has EFT worked for me on a personal level. And I really wanted to dedicate today's episode to talking about EFT from my um, experience. Uh, I initially engaged the technology of using emotional freedom technique um, after investigating uh, different forms of energy psychology, of course, there's NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, um, and various other forms of uh, EFT training. Um, and I did a lot of uh, investigation and reading and research on the different forms of uh, emotional freedom technique. Uh, which I'll refer to as EFT in this episode. And I thought that the best way for me to approach the topic was to really talk about my experience. And I hope that through that uh, you look at um, EFT as a technology uh, and as a way of bringing that into your life um, amongst other things that I will be talking about uh, throughout the other episodes. So let me just start by saying that EFT is a technology. A technology that can only be used if you truly believe in it. Um, it can only be used uh, if, you're, if you don't make a judgment on it um, and if you pursue it and you really understand that it's not a quick fix uh, system. But for me, it wasn't just about applying the understanding of EFT. Let me just, for the people that don't understand what EFT is, EFT is a way of using uh, Eastern uh, acupuncture uh, philosophy and utilizing the different acupressure points on the body to release blocked energies in the meridians. So if you look at the seven chakras, the seven chakras are actually connected to 114 chakras and these obviously control the flow of energy within our, within our bodies. It's so important to understand the power of uh, energy within us and how a block of energy can actually affect our lives. So I'm just going to backtrack one step further before I actually get into the teaching of uh, EFT or the, applica uh, the application of EFT. And uh, initially when I understood the power of EFT, which is to tap on different acupressure points on your body to release blocked emotions and feelings attached to those emotions, I actually took one step before that. And I think that the step before that is a really critical step because it's what most people miss in this whole concept of uh, EFT. When I started to do EFT, the first thing I did was I bought myself a little black book. And within that little black book, I documented a list of areas within my life that weren't working. And, you know, there were quite a few areas that I felt could be improved. Some things were just situations that kept on reoccurring over and over again. And the feelings and emotions to those reoccurring events were causing some fairly serious distress in my life. And so uh, what I did was I wrote down different situations that were creating this, uh, th these feelings of stress and frustration and negative emotions. Um, and what I did is that I started extracting and understanding why these emotions of feelings and were residing within me. And one of the things that I did was really understand how this process was a process of stepping into my vulnerability because it was about being truthful with myself and also confronting uh, the issues 
that were related back in my past, namely, you know, in, in my environment as a child. When you start asking the questions of, for example, um, why do I continue to attract these type of relationships in my life? That is the beginning of EFT from my standpoint because the question, why am I attracting these relationships in my life constantly over and over again, led me to the next question and that was, how do these relationships make me feel? And naturally, they made me feel that I had lack of self-worth, low self-esteem, um, there was a never-ending drama around these relationships. I was always unhappy, uh, felt submissive. There were a lot of different feelings that these uh, relationships were bringing out in me. The emotion that it was bringing out in me was independent of the feeling. And, uh, you know, the emotion was low self-esteem, low self-worth. Uh, and it was um, a place that you know I was fairly uncomfortable with. So then I took one step further back from there and I asked myself, well, when did I acquire these feelings and emotion? Where was I? How old was I? Who made me feel like this? And at what age? Where was I? Who was in the room at the time that I experienced this emotion? And it's interesting because when I talk to people who take on the technology um, in using EFT, usually they say, but I can't remember back when I was four or five or 10 or 12, whatever age you were. And uh, I always suggest this process because when you start peeling the onion layer, as I call it, it's amazing at how your body will reveal the truth. And suddenly you do remember situations and you do remember scenarios and you do go back into the situation when you first experienced these feelings and emotions. From that information, I was able to almost write a book of situations uh, that had occurred over many years that I felt were uh, critical to the application uh, of EFT and obviously eliminating the feelings and emotions that I was carrying around for all these years. And I really got to understand how these, these feelings and emotions were also creating belief systems within me. And those belief systems were what I was creating in my outer experience. The writing of the situations that you experienced in your environments throughout your younger life are absolutely critical before you apply the, uh, uh, the, the, the practice of EFT. And I can't stress that enough. The application of EFT alone, I don't believe is as powerful if you don't extract the information like an onion layer and really understand uh, when and where the actual belief started. That is the starting point to EFT. And one of the great things about doing that um, before you enter into the tapping process of EFT is that you can get clear on the script and, and that's another fundamental part of EFT. It's creating the script so that it's relevant to you in that moment. And I think that's a very important part of this whole process. Um, engaging a practitioner is fantastic. Um, and the practitioner will take you through this process. But before I engage my practitioner, um, I actually did this whole script process way beforehand because it was a way of releasing the truth, confronting the truth, and also, I was very clear on the areas that I needed to work on. Once you understand where the beliefs started, then you can start 
applying the process uh, and the technique of EFT, the tapping process. And I'll do an example uh, in this episode so you just understand how I uh, create the process from beginning to end. But I also want to say that uh, EFT alone is not enough. There are, in, in my opinion, there are a few processes before you start understanding how you as a technology work, how understanding the process that I've come to understand does reduce the suffering in your life. It's a fact. Um, and uh, the, 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 the time you spend on peeling that onion layer, understanding where the beliefs came from, who gave you those beliefs, and the stories that you created around these beliefs when you were four, five, six, ten, don't have to be the controller of your reality anymore. But the step before the application of EFT is your stories. Not one story, there's many stories because the stories are all around the different beliefs. From there, once I started to do EFT my, by myself without my practitioner, that process was so critical because it actually allowed me to write my own scripts and the scripts were unique to my situation and that was a really important component. And then the tapping process starts. So they're the elements of EFT that I believe are really important. Uh, instead of following an audio or a video um, on YouTube and hoping that it will, uh, you know, that, that you will be able to eliminate the beliefs that are caught up in your energy fields. So let's do an example. An example would be, for example, I'll just use the relationship example only because I've used it in this, at the beginning of this episode. So let's just assume that you continue to attract uh, a relationship, man or woman, in your life that is a dominant, domineering sort of a person, a control freak, and you constantly feel like you're uh, submissive to this person. You just are in a submissive role in the relationship. The feeling that it gives you is it makes you feel like you don't have a voice, uh, you may feel like uh, you may not be able to speak freely and openly and you may also feel that uh, you're a loser. Um, the emotion that it may raise in you could be anger and disappointment and perhaps even sadness. So the distinction between emotion and feelings are very different yet they're very much uh, attached to one another. The script always starts with your opening statement which we usually tap on our karate chop and I'll go through the different points that I use um, and then obviously the different tapping points. Now with EFT I tap in some instances for an hour or two until I feel that the emotion and the feeling attached to that belief is reduced quite significantly, then I'll stop tapping and I'll perhaps might continue doing it the day after or two or three times thereafter until I feel no attachment to that belief. Before you start EFT or the tapping process, what we usually do is rate from one to 10 how high uh, the actual emotion is within you. Um, and usually 10 is it's really high and one is it's almost non-existent. So in this example, let's just say you feel really angry because you're attracting these type of relationships uh, in your life. You might rate it at nine. I'm feeling really angry. Uh, your partner has done something that's really increased this feeling of unworthiness and anger within you in the moment. That is actually the best time to start tapping. And for me that has worked tremendously. Um, in particular in the area around weight issues. 
So when you're in that moment, you rate yourself from one to 10, and usually you would always start off with eight, nine, or 10, which is very high, and you start the process. At this point, you should have a script that you have created to assist you in going through the process of EFT. And as I said, if you have a practitioner, your practitioner will teach you this process before you can apply it yourself at home. But for the sake of this episode, let me just go through a process with you. So I would always start it off with something along these lines, tapping on the karate chop, which is just this point here, seven to 10 times. Even though I think I'm a loser for attracting these type of relationships, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Even though I keep on attracting these loser relationships, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Even though these relationships are really pissing me off, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then we start tapping the different tapping points. And I don't use every single tapping points. I use the ones that I'm about to go through with you and I find that they are perfectly fine. And most of the uh, practitioners use these tapping points. So you tap on your karate chop three times and you tap about seven to 10 times and then you start the process. I attract losers, side of the eye. I attract losers, these losers, these losers. These losers, these losers that keep coming in my life, under the arm, these losers, the top of the head, these losers, and I usually do a circular motion on the top of my head. And then what I do, and this has worked tremendously for me, then I start talking out loud exactly the way I'm feeling about a situation that has just occurred in that moment, for example. I'm so pissed off right now, I can't believe I'm in rage. He's really making me so angry right now. I don't deserve this type of relationship. Who does he think he is treating me like that? I'm a loser. I keep on attracting these type of relationships, therefore I'm a loser. Who's going to want me? I'm just dumb and stupid. No one's ever going to want anyone, anybody like me. I'm really stupid. I'm a loser. I hate the fact that I keep on attracting these relationships. Why can't I get the relationship like all my friends are in? I never, ever, ever am able to attract a relationship like my friends attract. I'm such a loser. I'm a total, absolute loser. I hate the fact that I can't get my shit together. What is wrong with me? Why can't I attract a man of my dreams? I'm not stupid. I have an education. I have a great job. I just can't get my relationships together. What is wrong with me? I'm so angry right now. I just want to hit somebody really, really, really hard. I'm really, really, really angry. Take a big, deep breath and out. Take a deep breath in again and out. One more and out. Now, measure the emotion right at this point. Now, usually you might come down one or two, maybe even two or three times, but you continue this process until you get down to about a two or a one. And at that point, you should not actually be feeling any emotion towards the situation in that moment. I always complete my EFT with positive affirmation. And I think that's really important. And one of the reasons that's important is because as you're deleting the old beliefs, we wanna start putting in new beliefs and replacing those old beliefs with new beliefs. I think that's a really important way of ending the EFT. So you could end it something along these lines. I am amazing. Of course I'm capable of attracting an amazing relationship. I am always at the right place at the right time to attract the right relationship. Men find me irresistible. I've got so many men after me that it's not funny. I can't count how many people want to 
are asking me out and want to go out with me. I am amazing. I always, pro I always attract amazing men in my life. I always attract positive, educated men that love to explore life, that are very open-minded and love to have a lot of fun. I'm always in the moment, in the right place at the right time. I'm a wonderful human being. The universe has got so many great plans for me along those lines. So you get the drift. So end the, uh, the EFT tapping process always on a, on a positive note. Now with EFT you can do as much as you like it doesn't hurt, harm you. There's no right way or wrong way. The only, great, the only thing that you must remember with EFT is that you must tap on the meridian points. And I always use the in, inside of the eye, the outside of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, under the chin, collarbone, under the arm, and the top of the head in a circular motion. That's it. And you can work on all the different areas of your life that continue to reappear, where all the negative emotions and feelings continue to reappear over and over again. They're the areas of your life that you need to work on. So once you go through this EFT process, and I still continue to do it daily if I have to, uh, sometimes I'll be driving and I'll be doing it and I'll just be tapping on one point as I'm driving. I'm sure people would think I'm a crazy woman in the car, but it's really fantastic when you understand and believe in the technology of EFT that it truly has immense positive feedback in your life. There is a third step to EFT and uh, I've also used the next phase of EFT and it's called matrix re-imprinting using EFT and I just cannot recommend it highly enough and it's a process of EFT not as intense as the practical process of EFT. What the matrix re-imprinting introduces is that the belief system actually lives on the outside of you, in the matrix that surrounds you, the ether, um, the energy that, that goes with you wherever you go. And so some beliefs are frozen and EFT alone can't actually deal with or break down those beliefs as easily as what the matrix re-imprinting can. Uh, if you Google matrix re-imprinting, and we'll also have it on our website in the resources section, uh, you will see that uh, it's a technology that not only is used by many practitioners now, but also has been embraced by uh, some of the um, credible science names in, uh, in the world. Um, people like uh, Greg Braden and um, Bruce Lipton have embraced the, t the technology uh, Im immensely. And so that is another process that I usually add to the mix if I need to. That the whole idea around, and we keep on bringing up the law of attraction, and I just want to sort of mention this in this video, is that the law of attraction is a process, but it actually requires some fundamental processes before you can actually stop the suffering to be able to manifest. And as we know, which I'll get into more detail at some point, the process of manifestation all comes and stems from the heart. So if your heart is not giving out into the universe positive energy, positive beliefs, you can do as much of the law of attraction stuff that they teach you in books like The Secret as much as you want, but you're not gonna get anywhere. So my process is a little bit more tedious, but I know it works because I spent a lot of time researching what mystics do, what scientists do, and what spiritual gurus are teaching. And I do believe that the formula that I've pulled together really does work. 
So the final part of this whole process, once you understand what the benefits that EFT can give you, is then you go into a place of meditation. And that's a whole different episode that I will be touching on. Um, and however, for, for this particular uh, episode, I just wanted to specifically touch on the power of EFT. On our website, we have a number of audios that you can follow that give you an outline, if you like, of uh, different areas that you may like to work with, and it's almost a starter. So please feel free to use those. They're for free. You, know, you can come back to the site and use them whenever you like. That's what they're there for. There's also an animation information in on the home page in the main video section of the tapping points and uh, you will actually see the animation take you through the whole process that I use so please feel free to also uh, use that as well um, in the next episode I do really want to get into the process of uh, beginning to end including the whole meditation process because I do believe that that is a critical component to the law of attraction. These are technologies that we can use on a daily basis to help us create an amazing life. That's what this is all about. This whole all these episodes that we provide you is all about adding value to your life. And they're all based on information and research that I've dedicated my life to. And I'm pulling it all together and extracting things that I know work. Things that, I, that don't work, I have no interest in uh, pushing those on this website because they simply just don't add value to your life. And I know what it's like to be in a situation where you're just looking for the answers and you don't know where to go. And the reason why you don't know where to go is because your mind is so cluttered with negative beliefs about yourself that naturally you will not find the answers that you're looking for. EFT has had a profound effect on my life. I want to share that with you all. It has allowed me to lose immense weight and keep it off. It has allowed me to create the clarity that I've been looking for. It's allowed me to control my emotions when I'm in a situation and I deal with those situations in the moment. And it's most of all, it has brought clarity into my passions and my dreams and really fulfilling the life that I came here to live. So it does work. And like you, I know where you're at. I know what you're thinking right now, that you've tried it and it doesn't work. Just because you've tried it once or twice, maybe even 10 times, just keep trying because by continuing to apply the technology, you will have a breakthrough. I know you'll have a breakthrough. I've been in that situation where I've tried and tried and finally I had the breakthrough. But I wanted to share with you what I did before I applied the tapping process of EFT because I do believe it's a fundamental step that many of us don't do and you will be amazed, absolutely amazed at what you will find out about yourself, your beliefs and how those beliefs are truly holding you back from achieving the life that you came here to live. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week on episode five.